faster and just simply play their game. So guys, it'll be really fun to see what kind of experimentation we see out here on the field today. Yeah, Mike, I, I mean, Abby brings up a good point. It almost gives me chills. I can remember my freshman year, I played a little bit. I didn't play as much as I wanted to. One catch for seven yards. Why does that stick in my mind? But that next year, I wanted to play baseball. Coach Downey, you said, look, you got a chance to start. If you want to go play baseball, you can do that. But I think it is probably behooves you to really be ready for spring. That next spring was a difference. And this is what a lot of guys have to look forward to, no matter where you are in your career, getting that opportunity. That's what Dave Doran said to us yesterday. He's so excited to see a lot of the young guys and what they do today. Well, the format means that the kickoffs, the punts, they won't be live. There will be no rushes for the field goals as well. And the structure is we've got the first team in red and the second team in white. You've got the quarterbacks wearing the black jerseys. And we get a look at Devin Leary operating the first team NC State offense right out of the chute. Yeah, and you're going to see a thud tempo. It's not going to be live, but I'm sure they'll heat up a little bit as this first half goes along. On play action, Leary is pressured and lofts it incomplete to the sideline. A yeah, real good coverage by the defense, and they're going to get after him with some, some pressure. Tony Gibson talked about it. He said, hey, he's made us better as a defense, but Jalen Frazier coming off the edge on that one, really providing some pressure out of the nickel position. You see the numbers for Leary last year, right around 60%, 66% with his completion rate. Fifth-year senior, and he was the team MVP last season for the pack in that nine win and what they hoped was a 10-win campaign. Going to be new running backs. That's Jordan Houston with a gain of five yards. Yeah, they have to get the production out of the running game. This, this Tim Beck offense is always predicated on downhill running ability. Jordan Houston a few years ago had a really big season, but has, way, you know, with the uh, Zonovan, uh, Kent Knight and Ricky Pearson, he hadn't had any action, so they're looking to find production to stave off what they lost. 1,400 yards last year, eight touchdowns between those two. They got to find a combination and a bunch of guys out of this crew this year. Third down and five. Larry complete to Houston out in the flat, and he turns it upfield and knocked out of bounds at the 48. We well, talked about Ricky Person and Bam Knight, and so Houston headlines the group. Dave Doran said to us yesterday, Jordan Houston has waited his turn, and then everyone you talk to, Buck, is excited about Demi Sungo Carnabe. Yeah, they've been talking about him, his explosiveness and some of the things that he can do. And Houston is one of those guys that has been right there at the precipice, but hadn't had a chance to make it through. Complete to Keon Lassane. To the right side, he's one of the veteran receivers, a junior from a group that returns there, Thomas and Devin Carter, but of course loses Emeka Mezzi. Yeah, when, when you lose a Mezzi, you have to have guys to fall back on. And Lassain is one that needs, has, has to step up. He's in that position where there's been some good things for him in the spring. Devin Carter, a guy that we're going to call a lot. Thomas Thayer Thomas, also another guy that will, you know, call his name a lot when he's playing. Won't see a lot. I think a guy we need to pay attention to is for Porter Rooks, who's just in motion there. Yeah, slot left, and Leary looking to throw. Complete, finds Devin Carter along the sideline. So that's the one thing I like, Mike, and you can see that with the pressure going off schedule. We talked a little bit about that with Devin Leary. You got pressure coming at you, right? And what do you do? You just slide over, get the ball out. Devin Carter, spectacular catches. Sometimes doesn't focus on the easy ones, but right here, nice throw and catch. Get a turn and get the ball down the field. So this first team Wolfpack offense in the red zone. And Leary to the air once again, connecting with Lassane for his second grab. The catchable ball. That's the thing I see with Devin Leary when I watch him on tape, but when I see him live. I saw their game against Furman last year, and he was still in the progression of growing in this 10-back offense. But you can see he knows where to go with the football every single time. 
Six games last year, six straight games, no interceptions. That's the kind of thing you want to see out of your quarterback. Yeah, it was like 230 pass attempts in a row before he threw a pick on a Hail Mary. He's looking left toward the end zone, incomplete, intended for one of the guys you mentioned, Porter Rooks. And, and even right there, when he misses, he doesn't miss inside. He throws the ball out. And we were talking about that with him. Just even a, a touchdown that he threw to one of his tight ends. Safety was coming over. He knows I got to throw it to the outside with a big body. And he said that. I'm working on throwing the ball in the area so they can go make a play. See what he did last year. He was one of five finalists for the Johnny Unitas Award. One of three of those five from the ACC, along with Kenny Pickett, and Wake Forest Sam Hartman, who, like Leary, returns this year. On third down, incomplete, looking for Lesane. The biggest thing with this offense is going to be how they protect on the offensive line, losing Icky and you know, you lose guys like that. Right now, Grant Gibson isn't able to play because of a hand, so Dylan McMahon is playing the center position, which he's never done. Anthony Belton's name is one that we're going to call a lot today when he's in there, 74, to see what he can do to slide into that left tackle position. Well, Chris Dunn is still here in Raleigh. Fifth-year kicker comes out for a 19-yard try. And he is true. You know, when you have a veteran group, especially at your kicking position, you feel a little bit more comfortable. <laughs> A little bit more comfortable. He was one of the heroes in the North Carolina game at the end of the regular season. Middle dribble, he says it was called. <laughs> to recover that onside kick, part of a thrilling finish to that game. Yeah. Tim Beck chats with his quarterback, and we touched on this off the top, but there's a lot of guys being held out today by Dave Doran and his staff as well. Injury is a big part of what we're about to see on the first team defensive side, you've got six guys who aren't going today who project as starters for Tony Gibson. Yeah, they have 10 returning starters coming back on defense. And the linebacking position is the one where you lost some guys for injury, but they'll be back. But it allowed guys like 26, De Devin Betty, a chance to play a lot. And he showed what he could do along with Drake Thomas. Second team offense and Ben Finley operates it and he checks down to Demarcus Jones behind the line of scrimmage. It's the list of guys who are out. So it affects the secondary with Tyler Baker Williams, Tariq Pitts, one of the corners, the defensive line with Clark and Durden, and of course, that outstanding linebacking core that we're talking about. Yeah, when you ha don't have those guys, but they've been able to play. Isaiah Moore and Peyton Wilson have been able to be in the meetings and understand. I think that's what's helped them, the mental reps. But it's allowed some young players to step up and really make plays for them. On second down, this is Finley. Throws to the sideline, complete to Jones for his second grab on as many plays. Ben Finley is a guy that I, I really want to see today, too, and I'm sure everybody here wants to as well, just to see what he can do. Hadn't had a lot of opportunities, was 5 of 8 last year throwing the football, but right away you can see him getting the ball out to the running back position, making sure, and he also has a pretty big arm. I want to see that and how he moves in the pocket as well. Set to be a redshirt sophomore. Remember Aaron McLaughlin transferred out a couple of months ago. This is deflected and intercepted. And who else but Tanner Engel? First team all ACC, Mike. And they were able to knock the ball up in the air. We call it Oski or Bingo. But whenever you go in the, the area like this, it's always difficult as a young guy. Really good capability of going up and knocking the ball up in the air and allowing his defenders to fall to it. Really nice play there. Finley was searching for one of the newcomers in the wide receiver core. Daryl Jones, the Maryland transfer. And it was a little too tall for Jones. We told you it was one of the great defenses in the ACC last year for Tony Gibson and Dave Doran. On a reverse, we know there Thomas can throw it. Looking for Carter who hauls it in. I had said last night at dinner <laughs> that this was going to happen. The trick play was going to be 
They heard Thomas throwing the football. And Mike, what do we have? They heard Thomas throwing the football. I have ESP or ESPN <laughs> or something like that. Great job by Devin Carter of sticking with the football and staying with it to catch. <laughs> yeah, how many times have we seen that through the years as Thomas is back for what will be a sixth season with the pack? Mary out of the gun. Steps up, throws down the seam, and that is complete. He connects with one of the twins. That is Fred Sebro. Yeah, really talented twins and Sad and Fred Sebro. But again, you see how he works his eyes, Devin Leary outside, and then comes back in. That, that little bit of the mechanics of throwing the football or throwing guys open, like people like to say, that right there is what you want to see from the quarterback. No Trent Penix or Chris Tootle, the tight ends last year who combined for seven receiving touchdowns. On first and goal, this is Houston into the end zone for a touchdown. That offensive line to the left side, Mike, did a really nice job of creating space. They like to do this, get that ball starting on track, that zone play, you can get, get your running game outside. Look at all those linemen moving and locking up on white jerseys. And it really allows, Grant Bryson Spees had a really nice block there, 56. And that was the pressure point of the area where Jordan Houston is able to get in for six. Big 56 with, can play all over the place, 29 career starts. They, they, you can plug and play kind of guy. Uh, but right there, there was a really good block out of the left guard. A seven yard touchdown run behind Spees on that left side. And you mentioned it earlier, Anthony Belton Gets the nod with the first team at left tackle. They think he's had a good spring trying to replace Iki Aquanu, who yeah. we're going to chat with here this afternoon. Man, you talk about a guy that, you know, came in and developed and just, I mean, he was a beast when he really, when he started figuring it out. You got to see him on tape last year, and it was really impressive to watch. I'm excited to see him and what's going to happen for him in his pro career, because I think he's going to be a really good player on Sundays. Chris Dunn is good on the point after. And 10 points for the red team, the first team group. And the touchdown courtesy of Jordan Houston off the Tanner Ingle INT. At Carter Finley Stadium, let's go down to Abby. All right, guys, I'm down here with Coach Jordan. I know it's early, but you were excited to see the guys out here finishing plays. What are your impressions? Well, I thought the uh, throw and catch right here to Devin Carter was awesome between those guys. Good to see. It's good to see the protection right there by the running back, picking up the corner blitz, and I love Tanner Ingles' interception. So, so far the red team looks like you would hope they would. I'd like to see us not turn the ball over here at quarterback, though. I was going to say, can you just educate us as a head coach, like what your decision making is as they take the snap here in your communication? Hold on. <laughs> My, say it again. Give me the question again. Honed in here, Don, guys. Um, so before they take the snap right here, can you just kind of educate us as a head coach? What is your communication down here on the field with the other coaches and, and your decision making around this time at the line of scrimmage when the guys are sitting here? <laughs> you know, we're just trying to get the ball to certain guys right now and let them play. I mean, more than anything, we want to see them play football today. I'm just listening to the coaches and you know if we're going to go for it on fourth down I'll let them know different things like that but uh, today's about the kids you know I mean I just want to see them play and have fun. You had about 300 plus alumni here last night there's a lot of guys down here on the field you're going into your 10th season as a coach of this program how impactful is it to see some of your former players here? It means a lot you know it uh, makes me feel a little old too to have <laughs> 10 years worth of alumni in there that I was a part of working with but uh yeah, it's special. You know, I've been to uh, several schools, and to have a turnout like that is unique. It says a lot about the experience they have. I was going to say, what did you like about that one? It was a nice play by Betty. Really nice play. You build the foundation of this program on that blue collar mentality. They're all fired up coming on the sideline over here. So with the expectations surrounding this program, how do you keep these guys grounded and remind them of that blue collar mentality? Well, we talked about what got us to where we are. We also talked about our goals. And the next thing we did is talked about what would prevent us from reaching them. You know, and I think 
we all understand we can't be complacent. We can't get caught up in the preseason stuff that some teams will. And we've got to have a bigger chip on our, sh uh, our, our shoulders because we know there's on the calendars when people play us, we're circled now, you know, and we're going to get their best. Thoughts overall on the atmosphere today? Good crowd that came out to see the team. Yeah, a beautiful day. There's a lot going on with other teams having their games and the Masters. So excited to have some fans in the stands for our guys to play in front of. It's great. All right. Thank you so much for your time, Coach, guys. All right. Go Pack. Yeah. I mean, and, that, and he, he said everything you want out of, out of the coach. On these days, your players have to play. And that's what you want to see. You don't want to have a whole lot in. It's going to be somewhat vanilla. There will be some things that come to you, but you want to see guys get in position and see if they can make the plays when they have opportunities. Devon Betty had that big hit that Dave Doran mentioned. Now the first team offense back to work with Leary lofting it for Lassane down the sideline. Really nice job by Lassane of just staying and looking at the ball, letting the, receive, the, the defender go by him. Again, Devin Leary has a nice deep ball. This is the back shoulder. Lassane pushed off a little bit, but receivers, if, if they don't call it, it's not called. But a really nice job here of just making sure he stays aligned with the ball, goes up and gets the football at his highest point. 41 yards to Keon Lassane. They only had eight catches last year. Darius Edmondson on the cover. Very under some pressure. Throws it away. And, and that's what you have to do. You know, when you don't see anything, you got to get rid of the football. I'm wondering here if they're going to say. Looks like a holding yeah, call. A little bit late there. We talked about Betty with that big yard penalty. He, he's a typical Repeat guy that has down. played really well in place of all the other folks. So when they come back, they have a young man that can really play. He got started and really going late in the year when they needed him most. And I think that's what's really helped this team continue to play strong defense. Leary tucks it and heads up the middle. And do not touch Devin Leary. That is prized property. <laughs> I, I, I know when quarterbacks want to run this, this ball and you, you know you can't touch them. But it looked like Drake Thomas was one gap over where he kind of went outside. And Leary saw that and was able to just sneak inside of there. You don't think of Leary with legs. He doesn't run a whole lot. Uh, but that's the one time or one space and area where you need him. And he knows he's not going to get hammered today when he takes off with the football. He rushed for 11. And now on second down, he's got Demi Sumo Kargabe right beside him. Sophomore running back. On an out pattern, that's complete. It's Fred Sebro again. The twins, Fred and Sed. It, it sounds like the Weasleys in Harry Potter. <laughs> really good outside protection here by Kern Bay. They talk about him being able to do this effectively against anybody. And then Sebro, I, I, I told Devin, I said, look, man, I don't care who the tight ends are. Let's find them because yep. I want to give them a little love. And that was a nice throw and catch right there. You of all people know that. <laughs> But he, he does look for his tight end crew, and you can tell those guys want to make plays. That was a nice throw. You have to focus on it because that defensive hand came in late. Complete on a slant for Lassane. And he has been busy here in this first quarter. I like how Lassane is using his body and, and working through. That's a slant route where you have to get in between the defender and the quarterback. If he hits you perfectly, which usually that ball right between the one and the five, it gives you a good chance. He's working on Edmondson, and Edmondson can't get through him. Lassane does a really nice job of picking that up. You mentioned the pack has to replace Emeka Mezzi, second team all ACC last year, and the program's all time leader in receptions. He passed Jalen Samuels in October. Looks like defensive pass interference intended for Thayer Thomas. That was Sean Brown, the free safety and coverage. What they like to do is they'll do this boot action where the quarterback will start and he'll work around and watch the tight end, 48, coming on a lion or line route. Then he has Thayer Thomas in the back. <laughs> Clearly, the defensive back is like, I'm not letting you get this touchdown. You're not getting it on me. <laughs> 
He's had plenty of them in his career. <laughs> Thayer Thomas with 20 touchdown grabs. The only two NC State players with more yeah. in their careers. Torrey Holt and Jericho Country. And Torrey Holt coached him, I think, in high school. Yep. Sean Brown on that coverage there. Got a little handsy. Demi Sumo got wrapped up by Jordan Poole. And then the ball popped out afterward. I think they had already called him down. But you got to hold the football. And this is one thing that when we got on the elevator to go meet with the coaches yesterday, look, they're going to get them initially right there. Good pressure by the D-line. But you can't let that football on the ground. That won't let you play if you're doing that consistently. Defensive coordinator Tony Gibson was flabbergasted that for how good this defense was, top 25 in pretty much every category, they only were credited with one fumble recovery all season long. Jordan Poole right there getting in, getting inside, making some things happen. Zebro, a touchdown. Actually, I think they're going to call him at the one. The two-hand touch got him. I'd say as a tight end, he would score that one. That was going to be a score. <laughs> Fred saying, come on. Yeah, Fred does a little delay route, works himself outside. Leary just kind of buys his time. But this is one thing for a young player. Right here, when you catch this ball, accelerate up the field. Don't, don't pause. Right there is a young tight end. Hadn't played a whole lot. That's one thing from a coaching standpoint, I'm sure they're going to tell him. So third and goal. Leary. Complete. Thomas for the touchdown. Yeah, he's just a touchdown machine, man. But the one thing... I, I think you and I, Mike, and we can talk about it, and I know these coaches will. That's a great job for Thayer Thomas. And this is a nice throw again by Leary. A little bit inside, but Thomas still able to go snag it. But the play before, Seabro, catch it and turn up the field, man. That's your chance. And you're going to get some of those, but you got to make the most of them when you get those opportunities. You know, Thayer Thomas has seen some time as one of the outside receivers. That's the role Emeka Mezzi played. Devin Carter is an outside receiver as well. But in chatting with Tim Beck, it, it certainly sounds like they prefer him in the slot because of how much they like to throw vertically. Yeah, and, and what he can do in the slot. And that's why we talked about Porter Rooks. Hasn't had a whole lot of time because they both play that inside slot receiver. And usually when your inside slot receiver, does, what he does is he's really good as a route runner. He sets things up, and he's not afraid to go in there and get dirty. Their Thomas is like his brother Drake. They just, hey, you know, they play football. They're football players. They, they don't mind, you know, getting grimy. <laughs> and, and the thing, you got to be that as a football player. That's why I like both of them. They got that mentality, and, and you can just sense the guys like playing with them because they don't mind. And I think that's why he has had such a good career here because he's going to go catch it wherever, not afraid to go across the middle, and we'll get up and let you know, hey, look, I got this thing, and what are you going to do with it? Yeah, Tim Beck said to us, he, he's been here longer than Moses. Let's go down to Abby again. And off is the number 36, Marcus Jones. All right, guys, I got linebacker Peyton Wilson joining us now on the sideline, and you were injured in game two last season, so quite a bit of time out for you. How did you kind of stay involved and stay mentally sharp throughout that time? Uh, it was tough at first, you know. I was kind of mentally checked out for, I mean, I would say like two games after that. It was pretty tough not being able to play. But, you know, Coach Dorn and Coach Gibson really did a good job of making sure that I was in the building and just around the guys, and that really helped. You know, and staying mentally locked in, being in all the meetings and still game planning and stuff really helped a lot. Well, you're out here today. You're obviously not playing, but can you give us an update on how you're progressing in your health right now? Yeah, I'm pretty much all the way healthy. I would say I'm about 95%. It's about, been about six months, and it's a six-month recovery, and I'm feeling really great. Once this entire linebacking core is fully healthy and out there, what are you guys capable of this season? I mean, I think we could be the best linebacker uh, group in the country if we can stay healthy and we can just play how we're supposed to. Who's impressed you out here today early? Uh, I would say Jordan Houston. He's looked really good early. You know, Devin Leary always looks good. Best quarterback in the nation, in my opinion. But Jordan's really done well today. I like it. Bold predictions, guys. Thanks, Peyton. Yep, yeah, thanks. I love it. Best QB in the country and best linebacking group in the, co in the country as well. That's what they're capable of. Yeah, I mean, when you have that, you know, Peyton Wilson, you talk about a guy that when he went out, he was really starting to hit his stride. I think this defense is only going to get better when he's healthy. Uh, you know, they just, they've got some guys like him and Isaiah Moore that you want to see back and see in the, in the, in the fold.
but I, I like what he said. Hey, who's, if my quarterback isn't the best, who is the best? <laughs> yeah, he had shoulder surgery, as he told you six months ago. A guy who's going to be a fifth-year senior, but he's only played in 23 games. So he'll slot in as the will linebacker. Isaiah Moore will be the Mike, and Drake Thomas will go back as the Sam linebacker once again. Well, it is 17-0, the red team, the first team group, with the advantage here on the white squad in this first quarter from Carter-Finley Stadium. And right now we welcome on a pack great. Mike Lennon is kind enough to join us. Uh, Mike, thanks for stopping by. Yeah, thanks here. for having me. It's a great day to be out here. A little chillier than a normal spring game, <laughs> but... But that being said, it's always good to be out here. How's it? Oh, we got we got to get Buck in the picture. Come on, come on. All right, all right, all right. I'm the I'm the short one. I'm gonna have to sit down. Sit down. <laughs> yeah, I know, Mike. I, I thought I'm tall. <laughs> yeah, I like, yeah. uh, how's it How's it feel to be back? I mean, you're around the area quite a bit, but but what's it like? Yeah, I'm here all the time. Um, I live here in the off seasons. I use the facilities. They're uh, great having me back and. Um, you know, it's good to be around these guys. I spent a lot of time with, with Devin Leary, throwing with Thayer Thomas right now, throwing with the Mecca Mezzi. So I feel part of the program. Uh, it's a great culture here right now. These guys want to work, and uh, so it's fun to be around. You know, Mike, I just talked to Dana Bible a couple of weeks ago, and he always is yeah. high on you and talks <laughs> about you. and said he rode you a little bit, but he's happy to see your success. What was it like playing for him and playing under uh, his, his, his offense and getting you to that next level? Yeah, Coach Bible had as much of an influence on my career as anyone that I've been around. And uh, he he was tough on me. And there was plenty of times where I was getting absolutely ripped on that field or that practice field over there. But he brought the best out of me. And I am so appreciative of him and what he did for my career. Yeah. You've mentioned the, the time that you've spent around Devin Leary. What are your expectations for him and how good he can be this year? I, if, if there's more than a handful of guys that throw the ball better than him in college football, I'd be surprised. I mean, he can absolutely spin the ball. Uh, he just, he, he's special. He has a special arm talent. And there's high expectations, and I think they're looking forward to it. I mean, there's a lot of buzz around this program right now, and they, they've earned it. So uh, it's an exciting time to be a Wolfpack fan, and I think we, we have high expectations for Devin and, and the whole crew. Yeah, that's the buzzword, it seems, we always hear with, with Devin, the arm talent. Uh, to the casual fan out there, is it arm strength, the, the way he can he can pinpoint it? What is it's it? A, it's definitely his arm strength. He has a lot of velocity on the ball, and just his the tightness of his spiral. It's, you know, the term the quarterbacks can use is spin it, and when you watch Devin throw, he can absolutely spin it. You know, when you think about him and how he's been able to get better, what are some of the things that he has to keep working on that, for that next level? The thing that I've seen a lot, I remember when he got here, he's always had a great arm, but everything he threw was a line drive. Now he's developed some touch. He's seen the field really well. I mean, as, as a younger guy, that takes some time, but it, you've seen him grow, and he, he played at a very high level next year, and, um, you know, I think he'll do the same thing this year. All right, we got the end of the first quarter. Mike Lennon's going to stick around on the other side. It's spring game and we've got NC State quarterback royalty all over the place. Mike Lennon is kind enough to stick with us here as we talk about Devin Leary and company. His first team red team in this spring game has a 17-0 lead after one. And, and Mike, big picture with this program coming off last year, the momentum, the expectations uh, for next season. What, what do you make of it all? Yeah, I've, I've heard the saying, pressure is privilege, and, and they've, they have the privilege to, you know, go out and perform. There's a, a lot of hype, a lot of expectations, but they've earned it, and uh, just talking with NC State fans, you know, we're excited, uh, and a lot has to do with Devin Leary. He checks down in the flat here, and has a first down. He likes those tight ends, Mike, and, you know, as a former tight end, <laughs> what Devin just does a nice job. What, what did you see on that play with him throwing the football to Cam Walker? Yeah, I didn't see the exact concept down the field, but the tight ends in the flat, which is always kind of probably either your second or third read. Um, I don't know if they had a curl there to, where you're working kind of a curl flat concept or what, but he was probably reading what would be the flat defender, and uh, that guy dropped back, so then he's going to drop a low to the tight end in the flat. So he's got first down 10. There, Thomas at the bottom of your screen. Devin Carter, top left, and Porter Rooks in the slot. You mentioned that Thayer Thomas has seen some more work at one of the outside spots. We got a flag at the line of scrimmage. What you 
have in spring a little bit of <laughs> guys getting a little too quick. I like when they take Derek Eason, the guard, and they move him, and then they have that almost that old school counter play that Tim Beck likes to run a lot of. Yeah, they've got Dylan McMahon. You see 54 in the red. He's at center over from guard because no Grant Gibson. And talking about the offensive line, Ikki Aquanu, of course, expects to be a, a high draft pick. You mentioned training with uh, Emeka Mezzi. He's going to hopefully head to the next level as well. What, what do you think of him when you train with him? He's he has a uh, a lot of time. You saw what he did here. I, I wouldn't say he's all time leading receiver in uh, NC State history, and we've had some good ones. Uh, just has a good knack for the ball. Um, and right there, you saw you know Devin rip one to the to the field, a quick out route, and, and that's where his arm strength kind of shows off because those throws outside the number from this hash over to the other one. Yeah. I mean, in, in college it's far. In the NFL, we got kind of tighter hashes. That that throw right there. Um, you don't often see in college just because the, the hashes are much different. And now Larry takes off. Careful around him. <laughs> well, is that, and that's one thing, too, just getting rid of the football. We did it earlier in the game just in, in doing this, making sure you pull it when you need to. Everything caves down. They're going that side. He has to take off with that ball, and that's an easy decision for him. Uh, just reading the end on that play, there haven't been too many of those in my career. <laughs> I'm always hoping the DN comes off the field so I can just hand it off. But, uh, yeah, he's got to read the end. If the end crashes, then he's going to pull and keep it. Speedster Mike Levin is with us as Larry goes deep again, and it's picked off. Well, that is Sean Brown, the redshirt freshman safety. And Tony Gibson said to us yesterday, he's going to be really good in the future. Yeah, no, that's a ball that Devin wants back. Under threw that a little bit. Porter Rooks may have, a, have had a chance to come and fight for it, but that's just one of those. Sean Brown, nice job of attacking the football. No, he underthrew it a little bit. He probably thought that safety get in over there. And to start the play, I think he could have done a better job with his eyes, just holding that safety a little longer, and then he could put it up the field a little bit more. Bring up a great point. Talk about that, because we talk about it with the eyes, just holding the safety, just keeping him in the middle of the field so he can't go. Yeah, it looked like it was kind of a wheel route, maybe even a double move from the single, uh, the number one receiver. So on that, you, you got to hold the safety with your eyes. Um, that way he, he can't work, work you and... Uh, I think that probably affected his throw and, you know, caused him not to throw. Second quarter action here in the spring game. He didn't have a lot of those last year. That's the thing. Right? <laughs> I didn't. And, uh, you know, Mecca was those guys that kind of went back. You know, I think that from the quarterback standpoint, come on, he wanted the receiver to fight for that ball. <laughs> <laughs> I, I said it though. I, I'm not, and, and good quarterbacks will tell you, they'll come over to you and say, hey, just help me out. Yeah. The bad ones will call you out. You're like, hey, man, come on. You know, you got to have have some uh, fight on There's that. There's a trust trust <laughs> element that, hey, I'm going to throw this ball up, and the worst thing, you're going to break it up for me. Exactly. Sack of six on uh, Ben Finley operating the, the second team offense, of course. Younger brother of Ryan Finley, and you talk to players around this program, they say that Ben Finley has so many of the same mannerisms that big brother has. Second down and 16 for the white team. Drilled in their own end, that's Michael Allen, early enrollee, true freshman running back who they're high on. The playbook is real tight down here. You're just trying to get this ball out, right, Mike? <laughs> trying to get it to about the five yard line. That way your punter can have his full, you know, take his full two steps or whatever those guys do, but you don't want to be backed up where they're just taking one step and punting it. Defense has been stingy for the red. First team defense for Tony Gibson putting the clamps on the second team offense here in the first half. And Finley throwing into a tight window, incomplete, intended for Anthony Smith, the guy who's come on here in the spring at wideout. Yeah, that's the guy that they talked about has had a really good spring. Speed guy. They really want him to do more things right here. That's another opportunity to go up. Maybe instead of trying to go outside, go up. But just a, you kind of get caught as a receiver. That's a, that was a great throw by Ben right there. Yeah, yeah. High low in the, the corner against cover two. And the corner came down on the fly route. He threw it to the high guy. And you won't see the receiver make a play on that one. 
All the punts are fair caught, so we will step aside and say, Mike, thank you once again. Great having you up here. Thanks for having me, guys. Mike Lennon, our guest, spring game here in Rowley. Well, how about this finish? In the regular season finale last year, win number nine for NC State, 34-30 the final. Jumpman Chris Dunn with the onside kick and recovery. And then the great comeback, Emeka Amezi from Devin Leary. What a finish down the stretch and the pack over the heels here at Carter Finley. We go down to Abby with Emeka. Emeka, what an incredible game against UNC in the season last year. What do you remember about that game and how many times have you watched it since then? Um, you know, just on Twitter, they'll show it to me a lot. They'll tag me or whatever. But, uh, yeah, just I remember everything just about the stands, uh, the fans, uh, the energy of just the game and everybody rushing the field again, like twice in one season. It was just crazy, you know, crazy game. Well, Devin Leary was your quarterback, and we're seeing him out here today. What continues to impress him as they make a play right beside us here? What'd you see on that? I didn't see it. it was, I mean, Keon just doing Keon things. He's, he's going crazy today. <laughs> All right, well, going back to Devin, what continues to make him such a special quarterback? I think just who he is as a person. You know, he's a good person at heart. I think he just cares more about the team than anybody else. So when you have a leader like that, you know, with good energy, it just always comes back to him, which I feel like is his biggest thing. He's just a natural leader. You've been working out with another quarterback. He's uh, Mike Glennon. He was just upstairs in the booth with the guys. Can you tell us about that and how you've been preparing for the NFL draft? Yeah, just working with Mike. I just love because he's, you know, he's been in the NFL for such a long time, and just I just like to pick his brain about the little small things, you know, about the NFL that he knows about, and just with him, he's just a real perfectionist. So we're just I'll run a route, and I'm a perfectionist too, so it just works out well. You know, I just want to get the route perfect, and you know, he's the same way. We we'll just get a few times a week and it's just, it's just nice to work with somebody that's been in the NFL. How have your conversations been ahead of the NFL draft? It's been good just uh, just talking to a lot of different teams just getting ready you know and just really just staying ready just believing in yourself. I think that's the biggest thing right now going into this next stage of my life. All right well we're all wishing you the best. Good luck. Thank you so much. Guys. Thanks Abby. Yeah he said he gets uh, tagged in it all the time and so he'll watch it whenever he gets tagged in. We asked Devin Leary how many times have you watched it? <laughs> and Devin Leary said he has watched the entire UNC game. Yeah. Start to finish more than 20 times. That's crazy. And, he, you know, he got sacked six times in that game and still was able to throw all those, you know, all those touchdowns. And that one in particular at the end was just a special one for both of those guys. You can see the zone read principle out of Tim Beck's offense creating some space for uh, Dare Thomas on that last pass play. Again, right there, they come back to it, which I love. Sticking with something that's working <laughs> instead of going to something different, right? And notice what Leary did too. He changed his arm slot, yep. and that's something Tim Beck said a lot to us yesterday. Chris Proctor, the assistant quarterback's coach, talked a lot about some of the stuff that you have from the lower half. And folks think this all arm. Your arm is going to follow where your feet are going to give you the energy. I mean, we've got Naheem Hines up here. He was a fast guy, and he understands that. But these, all these guys we're talking to understand your feet have to be in position. You have to be in proper position to make plays any kind of time in any sport. This is going to be a touchdown. To the end zone. It's caught by Porter Rooks for a touchdown. You have to know where the ball is going, and I love to call that because we can see it from up here. I hope everyone is okay but he's only going to put the ball where the receiver has to come up with it or the sideline this is a very nice throw again watch this this corner route i'm going to put it outside my receiver is the one that has to make a play he gets one foot down six points and jalen frazier the safety redshirt jr from charlotte who has already dealt with an acl injury in his career a little bit slow to get up and hopefully he's all right that's the one thing in spring. You want everybody to come out healthy. You want people to compete. You want all of that. Hopefully Jalen is okay. But again, that's the ball that you have to have. And you, I, I, I can't stress it enough. When a quarterback puts it in a place for you to go make a play. And Porter Rooks is that slot guy, is one guy that I like. And when you watch him on film, he runs routes very effectively. Well, we mentioned OC Tim Beck. He is standing by with Abby.
right, Coach, uh, we've played a little over a quarter of football here. What's impressed you about your offense? Well, I like the way Devin's playing right now. Um, he's seeing things well and giving our guys a chance to make a play. And, uh, you know, our guys are playing hard and playing fast, and, and uh, that's kind of what we try to do as best we can. And I'm, I'm really ha excited and happy right now. He talked a lot about you kind of letting go of the leash with him, taking more command of this offense. As I've watched you guys communicate a little bit, what have you thought of his pre-snap sequences and how he's handled the decisions at the line of scrimmage? Yeah, much better. You know, it's always hard when you get into these games and these situations, right? Because you want to do so well and you put some pressure on yourself. But I told him, hey, just take a deep breath. He might miss a play here or there. That's okay. Just protect the football, right? He, he, that's the biggest thing for us. Don't turn it over. Let's hone in on your running backs and your wide receivers. I know those were kind of the two position groups that everyone had their eyes on. What have you thought about them? I've been impressed. You know, I like the way, again, our guys are playing really hard, our receiving cores making plays. And uh, that's always a really good thing for us because of, of the way we can throw it. And, uh, you know, I think our running backs, we'll see a little bit more in the second half with those guys. Uh, but I like I like the way they're playing right now. I really do. I'm, I'm very excited. All right, I know you're not uh, calling these plays right now, but we've got Ben Finley out here. So while I have you, let's walk us through what's about to happen here. So he's up checking right now. We're giving him the signal to figure out what play he wants to run. And then he'll, he'll have a, a sequence. He's trying to see if it's an odd or an even front. He's trying to identify if backers, pressure, safety looks. And then trying to take like here, he did a good job of recognizing we had the numbers to throw a quick little bubble screen. And so he took it. So that was a good play by Ben. I like it. Uh, you guys were one possession away last season of going to an ACC championship. What is it about this year's offense, the culture of the group, that's going to give you the opportunity to hit that goal this year? Well, I think we have a lot of veteran players at the right positions, right? Center, up front, our guards, our quarterback. Um, we have good leadership with this group and good young talent. So it's a good blend and a good mix of both. Anybody that's pleasantly surprised you today? Uh, you know, again, I think I think in spring, I've been really pleased that we had some young offensive linemen, Anthony Belt and Anthony Carter had uh, did a really good job. I, I really like our running backs, all of them. I mean, there are four or five guys in there that are really dead good. So I'm anxious to see a little more in the second half when it becomes live tackle. Great stuff. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Guys. He says it with a smile, too. <laughs> yeah, I mean, these guys want to – definitely you've been going all spring. You're tired of each other. This is an opportunity for you to kind of shine. And Ben Finley has been struggling because that, the pressure is coming after him almost every play. They've got to find a way to get him settled down so he can get the ball out. Yeah, Josh Harris just brought the pressure, and then Tanner Engel delivers the lick across the middle. Yeah, Tanner likes a little uh, contact. He doesn't mind hitting. He, he doesn't mind bodying you up. Saw it all last year. He'll go after the football, but he will come down and bring the heat. Yeah, Thud. See, this is the thing on offense. We know Thud to mean, hey, we body up and we stop. Sometimes the defensive guys don't quite get that, and they want to come all the way through and then bounce around. So we'll see what it gets to tackle football, what it looks like. Delivered the blow on Julian Gray. Well, 24-0 is the red team, the first team with the lead. And Tanner Engel. Had to look out for the official as well. Hey, Naheem Hines, he's with us after this. And that's what we'll talk about on this drive, Naheem, watching the younger guys, because this is a, a team that, like you said, they have a chance, the white team, to really show out against the first defense. And this is where you want to really step up if you're a running back or a quarterback or even the O-line. Exactly. Now, the white team, these are the guys you know who are, these are the guys who are going to make a lot of the jumps this year. You know, the red team, a lot of those guys solidify the white. The white team is where you're going to have to make that jump. Some of those are special teamers. Some of those guys are twos and threes that might become ones. And this is where, you know, obviously the red team's up. So, you know, you're going in now to make an opportunity to make a statement for yourself. Well, the white team had been held to eight yards until that completion. And that is said Sebro. We've already heard a couple of times from Fred Sebro. That's four yards to said. Yeah, like Coach Beck says, hey, twin, <laughs> catch that one. I need you to go out and catch it real quick. But nice job of getting the ball and turning up the field quickly. Get some yards. Naheem Hines is with us here in the broadcast booth. Charles Arbuckle, Mike Monaco, Abby Labar, our entire crew with you. 
from Carter Finley Stadium on a busy day of ACC spring football. Great play this on. You're on ACCN. Yeah, there's one of the guys you were talking about in Michael Allen. Yes, love it. There's a great play design, you know, get everybody going one way. You're throwing a lot of bubble screens, so obviously when you get the bubble screen going, because obviously, you know. Where, where's your landmark for the screen? I always ask people that as a running back. Where's your landmark and the best place to line up? It depends on where, if you're in the hash. If, if you're on the hash, you're obviously thinking probably uh, on the numbers. If you're in the middle of the field, you're thinking the alley. So it kind of depends. We're big on getting those linemen because obviously, you know, you got those big boys out in space. You have to put those guys on their box. 16 yards to Allen, who is in our ESPN 300. Ooh. And now it's a sack of Finley. The red team's defensive line turned it up on that. <laughs> I think they took that 16-yard uh, screen play personally because it was Finley had no time. And that, that's what, you, what you're going to have out of David Van and Josh Harris, those guys up front. This D-line is going to be really solid. They've got a lot of depth, and I think that's the biggest thing that's going to help that linebacking crew as well that will be healthy this year. Yeah, the, the white team's definitely uh, had a tough day today. They have, they've been bringing three and four all day and getting pressure, so you know when you're bringing three and four, when you bring five, is going to be a harder problem. On a draw to Allen, he is met there in the secondary by Jalen Scott. You get a look at some of the defensive linemen here for the pack and, and the note at the bottom that Corey Durden, the, the nose tackle, he was first team all ACC, took over at nose when C.J. Clark was injured. He's out as well here in spring ball, but Davin Van has impressed. You're looking at Josh Harris. He's dropped more than 50 pounds yes. and there's a lot of talent. Dave Doran, that is one position group that's really stood out to him. Yes, I was here when we recruited Savion and uh, Josh, and even watching Josh come in and the transformation he's made with his body in the past two years has been remarkable. And uh, Savion went to a rival school of mine, so uh, watching him in high school was amazing. But one thing we have we've always had is defensive talent. Yeah, Tony Gibson said that, that Savion, day one of spring ball, coming off the injury at the end of last year, he picked up right where he left off. Uh, just inside beating, and you're forced now. You're forced to take up and take off because you got one interior guy taken up two. If you can come off the edge and you bring pressure, what you were able to do with Davin Van, that forces the quarterback off his, his, his program. He has to get out of there. Well, one of the fair catches that we're seeing on all the punts with 126 to go. And Naheem, thanks so much for coming up. Great to hear your perspective. Thank you, guys. Thank you for having me. Naheem Hines, NC State great, kind enough to stop by up here in the broadcast booth at Carter Finley. 27-0 for the red team, led by Devin Leary. Yeah. Buck, pretty pretty cool to get Naheem's yeah. perspective, Mike Lennon coming by as well, and, and Abby holding down the sideline. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's always good when you can get these guys, and, it, it, and you, Dave Doran talked about it, more of them coming back, being here for so long, and giving them a chance to have guys that, that understand what he has tried to build and be a part of it, but still giving back and working with these guys in the offseason. That's, that's what good programs do. Inside of 90 seconds to go in this first half. And a completion out of the backfield to Delbert Mims, who springs to the second level downfield. And the redshirt sophomore from Indianapolis with a big gainer. He's really improved, and he's been a special teams guy, but they also like the ability right here out of the backfield to catch. Good job blocking out front by Dylan McMahon, 54. The center today, but normally the guard. Really nice pickup on the screen. 34 yards to Mims, and now Leary to the air, to the end zone, it's caught! Touchdown, Anthony Smith! That was a big time throw and a big time play by Anthony Smith, the guy that has had, always had great speed, but now becoming more of a complete receiver. Watch this, look inside and then just get that ball out. What did Glennon say about spinning it? That's a tight spiral, and a, it, you gotta go up and make the catch. And Anthony Smith does. Well, Dave Doran said this week that the sophomore from Maryland was one of his two offensive names to watch. He's been really consistent. And Tim Beck said to us, he's more complete. You were talking about this earlier, known as a speed guy, but he has rounded out his overall game. And I think when you have guys like Mecca, Amezi, that leaves and you get to watch his game, Anthony Smith has only benefited from working with receivers that are big and know how to be physical. 
but he's got the speed to that as well. That was the one thing they had always been afraid of when you played against him and when you saw him. But now you're starting to see him round out into not only a speed guy, but a complete receiver. And it's just interesting to have Naheem and Mike Glennon up because just talking about where they need to be on the field and just the different things and right. nuances of the game. I think the question you asked, uh, you know, Mike about Mike Glennon, hey, what does it mean when, you know, good arm talent? And being able to break that down from that perspective by two guys that are at that next level and have had some really good success at the next level. Well, hey, coming up next, we cap the day with the pit. Blue Gold game at Heinz Field. Your chance to get a look at next season's team before they open up in September and a look at what life is like after Kenny Pickett. Kenny Pickett moves on, but a lot of great quarterbacks returning in the ACC, whether it's Leary or Hartman or Cunningham. There's a lot of excitement again in this conference. It really is. I mean, you've got some guys that can play and, and make some plays and um, it, you know, it's just always interesting to watch what the next year provides. Spring gets you excited. The next year gets you really pumped up because you know you're getting ready to play some real football. Ben Finley goes sliding into second base there and pops right up. Okay. Yeah. I'm really interested to see how Ben progresses. And then we have Zoe Wallace and Duke Carroll that we'll see some also in the second half as well. Well, two-minute scenario for Ben Finley and this second-team white offense here late in the second quarter with the red team leading 34-0 on the white squad in this NC State spring game. Yeah, it's uh, one of those where this <laughs> the red team has clearly been able to get after the white team. But what I like is guys stand, you know, stand up helping each other out some fit you know being physical enough but also making some plays and I think that was the one thing they really wanted to see how would the offensive line especially the new look offensive line protect looks like they've been doing a pretty good job there in this first half and this defensive front has really shown what they they want to be a better attacking defense now that these guys are all be healthy next year incomplete intended for Julian Gray Buck in your day what was the prize for uh, the winning team out of the spring game? We had bragging rights, trash talk. If, if we went out for, for dinner, the, the losing team was going to pay. <laughs> 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 you had a free burger, maybe. <laughs> yeah, steaks are on buck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you really wanted to have a chance to have bragging rights. Well, 33 seconds to go. Hunter is a position that NC State's going to have to replace one of the all-time greats here in this program. Trent Gill was first team all ACC, so they brought in the transfer from Towson, Shane McDonough. That was Caden Newcaster that time, Richard Freshman with the second team group. So we've seen Devin Leary throw 30 passes here in the first half, 22 of 30, 319 yards, couple of touchdowns, the one interception. He's run it for 31 yards as well, and he's accounted for 350 yards of total offense here in the first half. Yes, we're going to see a healthy dose of Devin Leary next season. Uh, I mean, you know, and I, I, you and I talked about it even before the game. Honorable mention all ACC. There were some really good guys in this conference, so it's understandable. But sometimes outside of the conference, I don't think people really realize how good of a player and a, a girl of the football he is. That's some arm talent, and that's a heck of a catch by Anthony Smith along the sideline. The tight window throws are the ones that just keep impressing you more. And then Anthony Smith going up, snap. You could hear that snatched out of the air up here. Look at this. Get the ball out. Wow. And then he's going to throw it in an area. The DB can't do anything more but be right there on it. Sean Brown is like, hey, I can't do any better than that. Now complete over the middle to Porter Rooks. And the catch from Smith, that was a league quality catch. He got both feet down. That really was, Mike. I mean, it was impressive. So a timeout with 15 seconds to go in the second quarter here and a two-minute scenario for Devin Leary and company. The protection has been good, but also you can see there 
I think the one thing is he was more of a wind-up guy when he got here, and now he's more of a guy. You can see how quick the ball comes out of his hand, and, and that's just the, the thing that, what did Tim Beck tell us? He loves more than anything throwing the football. I thought he was going to say one thing, but he said food and just life. More than food and air. <laughs> more of than the food things and air. Devin Leary loves, I'm throwing like. the football is above that. <laughs> I mean, I thought he was going to say something else, but food and air was fine. And then it just got me to thinking, yeah, you got to want to be able to be great at the quarterback position or whatever position you play. And I, and I have to say, too, uh, my thoughts and prayers are out to Dwayne Haskins' family as well. Tim Beck coached him at yep. Ohio State. And, and just, I don't know all the details, but our thoughts and prayers are with his family. Amen to that. Check down into the flat to Demi Sumo Kargabe. Again, a running back who can do everything and that is going to be really special, according to Tim Beck. I don't think we miss anybody that we talk to, offense or defense, that wasn't excited about some of the things he can provide. And I think at that running back position, when you lose two really great ones like that, uh, that vacuum, who's going to step into that? I think 26 is one guy, and they talk about Jordan Houston as well, but Michael Allen, a young guy, Demarcus Jones, Delbert Mim says, hey, don't forget about me. They've got a, a bevy of guys that can play that role. He's going to go back to the back late. On second down, he does go to Sumo Kargabe. Yeah, it was four. He went to the last read, the check down. You could see uh, Kargabe going to be wide open over there. And what you have to do is just hurry up and get that there with the time to make sure you have a chance to kick this long field goal. Really nice progression by Devin Leary, but good protection and good pass catch by the by the young running back. Well, let's see how long Chris Dunn is good from. The fifth-year kicker, who is NC State's career scoring leader. He is first all-time in field goal makes. Trying this one from 54. And it's on its way. And good. Every week is important. But guys, you know, you know and I know, Mike, that that's, that, that's what's on there. They, they got everything circled for next year. First half was thud. We didn't see much hitting aside from Tanner Engel. This is live tackling. Dave Doran, Tim Beck, they're all excited to see it here in the second half. And as well, it'll be a running clock in the second half, so this will move really quickly here in the third and fourth. Well, it gives you a chance to see the young guys battle against each other, but it also gives you a chance to stay away from injury. Again, to reset things from the defensive side of things, you see coordinator Tony Gibson. They've got six projected starters who are among the 22 players today being held out, and a lot of that is the linebacking core. Oh, as we see. He missed it. Oh, he overran. He overran it, but hey, look. I love his hustle. Yes. He doesn't give up on a play, and he gets it back to the owner. And look, he, he wants to uh, give me the toy now. I got to have my toy. That's a 4 2 four, <laughs> maybe? I mean, that's quick. <laughs> He's moving. <laughs> we'll break down anything, bro. <laughs> yeah. Just give us a shot. Buck's ready. All right, so we start the second half with the white team operating. And redshirt freshman Zoe Wallace, 12 in the black jersey. Is that quarterback? He's from Gastonia and was an early enrollee last year. Let's go down to Abby. She's with Iki Aquanu. Yeah, I know you guys have been wanting to hear from this guy right here as he continues to prepare for the upcoming NFL draft. So let's start there. Can you tell us how your training's been going and the conversations you've been having? Yeah, training's been going real good. Uh, I've been over here back in NC State using our facilities over here training. Um, uh, no more workouts in the future, but I have a couple of in-person visits with teams. I got the Giants and the Jets coming up and the Panthers that are on. And I visited the Jaguars earlier last week. Nice. You and I were just kind of talking about that, the opportunity to have such good facilities here as they welcome you back and allow you to, to use them. What does that mean for you? Yeah, it means a lot. Uh, you know, they, they just open their arms, you know, allow all the alumni to come back and use the facilities, you know, reach their goals. We had a lot of former players at the pro day, and I find this is a testament to, you know, how that here at NC State, they're going to take care of you. You got a lot of guys down here, Justin Jones right there. Who are some other uh, former players that you played with here at NC State or current NFL players that you've leaned on through this process? Uh, one of the big ones is definitely my former roommate, Aline McNeil. Uh, 
you know, he went through this whole process last year and, you know, maybe a little bit of a harder process because of the COVID element to it as well. So I kind of just been asking him a lot of questions about, you know, what he went through, the meetings he went through, and, you know, just, you know, trusting his guidance a little bit. You guys were down here together on the sideline. Aleem's uh, down there right there. Uh, can you just tell me what it means to have that come to reality? You guys were playing on the field down here together as a part of the Wolfpack, and now you're talking about playing in the NFL together. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's great, really. You know, I thought we had a really talented apartment complex, you know, me and Liam, Derek Easton, and Trent Bennett. So I feel like, you know, a lot of great group of guys, and I thought we all kind of just helped each other grow. Um, I feel like, you know, about to have two down in the NFL, two more to go. We all just decided to see you know, everyone in the room thrive. I talked with Anthony Belton this week, and he said you go out of your way to screen record the practices and send him things that he can kind of work on. Why is that important for you for the current players here? Well, I feel like, you know, me and Anthony Belton and some of the other young guys, I feel like we kind of built that chemistry, especially last year. You know, last year being the freshman year coming in. Um, and I just feel like, you know, I always want to be that guy that people can lean on and be that guy that, you know, people can accept criticism for. And, you know, at the end of the day, just, they just know that I have their back and I'm going to do everything that I can do to make sure that they uh, are successful in the field. So NC State hands out syrup bottles for pancake box. I know you have quite a collection of those. What are you doing with those now that you <laughs> made your way past NC State? Yeah, so the syrup bottles, uh, after every game we get some syrup, we get a pancake block and we sign them. And we keep them in the O-line room as like a little trophy. So uh, I'll let Coach Garrison decide what to do with them. Uh, I think we're leaning toward donating them this year. Uh, so, you know, we just have to see. I thought maybe you had them at your house in like a, you know, box. I got one at my house, yeah. <laughs> I had to keep one from the Clemson game. It's just, you know, just a little, little token. All right. Thanks so much, Icky. Good luck in the draft. No problem. I appreciate it. Guys. So he has kept one, Abby, and speaking of the number one, he mentioned the Jaguars, who of course have the first overall pick. You saw that our Todd McShay has him projected in his latest mock draft from this past week at fifth overall. That's the Giants. And then he also mentioned the Jets, they're at four, the Panthers, they're at six. Dave Doran said last week everything he's hearing is top five. Yeah, I mean, you know, the kid out of out of Charlotte, North Carolina, Providence Day High School. I mean, I can remember watching him as a young player and all that the buzz about him that he got here and talk about turning into a man and getting himself in shape. And I think that's what's been the most impressive thing to watch how he's developed himself uh, from since he got here. And I think that's what's so when you look at that offensive line and you look at how guys play and how well they become and um, you can tell he's been coached well. Big old left tackle yeah. who was as good as it gets, consensus All-American last year. I love what he said, though, our, our talented apartment. Yeah. <laughs> we, you know, they, 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 got, they hold the corner market on guys getting to the NFL. <laughs> you know, and the big question is who will replace him at left tackle? And asked Dave Doran that yesterday because it is Anthony Belton, who Abby was talking about, slotted in there with the first team here today. And Dave Doran said, yeah, he's had a great spring, but there's a lot of work to do as a team before we're ready to finalize any one position, and, and certainly that position in particular. So there's Belton in the mix. There's the Swiss Army knife you were talking about earlier, the veteran Bryson Spees. There's Tim McKay. Those three among the returners are the most likely for the left tackle spot. And Belton's done a nice job. I mean, when I've watched him today, he's really been, been on point. I think the, the key for them is just making sure that you protect your quarterback and you got to have a left tackle that can do that consistently. Ben Finley is running with the ones here in the second half, and he throws incomplete, looking for Anthony Smith. And by the way, speaking of the offensive line, remember, still up in the air with Chandler Zavala, who was a starter before his back injury last year. And the latest is that his initial waiver for another year of eligibility was denied. And Dave Doran said last week that it's in the appeal phase, and the athletic department is trying to help Chandler Zavala as best they can. Yeah, they're not able to get through the process, but I think they're still it's still it's still in play from what I read and what and what Dave Warren has said as well. On third down and four. Finley rolls out, still has time, and he slings one complete. And Smith makes another play as flags fly, two different ones. I think they're going to get a hold first. Smith with a nice job of, of, of making the play. This is a long developing play, so I think that's where the, the holding is going to come in to play back there. 
And then Finley does a nice job of keeping us alive. And Smith, really good catch. Guy that's had a really good spring. And Anthony Smith has come on in a big way here. Tim Beck said he, he used to put a lot of fear into guys with the deep ball, but he can do anything he wants to right now. He was one-dimensional in the past. We'll get a timeout taken by the offense. Clock will roll, we step aside. Side of Carter Finley Stadium with a running third quarter clock. And Demi Sumo Kargabe is shoved out of bounds, wrestled out by Colby Johnson, the redshirt freshman linebacker. Kargabe, he, he will okay. run, and he, I can see what they're talking about, the explosive power. It was a long opportunity because you got a long third down, but I think the real key for him is understanding Getting, getting accustomed to the offense. They say he does a really nice job in the uh, pass protection game, and I think that's that's why you want to see more of him. Well, this is new punter Shane McDonough taking over for Trenton Gill, and the Towson transfer moves it all the way into the end zone. We step aside again from the spring game. Running clock here. As we keep things going here from NC State, I'm now with defensive coordinator Tony Gibson, who joins us. And we talked a lot about how you have 10 of 11 returning starters coming back to this team. But you were excited to see how the young guys take advantage of the opportunity. What were your thoughts on seeing some of them play today? I uh, thought that uh, Sean Brown did an excellent job. Uh, had a nice interception in the first half, so I was excited about him. Uh, Claude Larkins up front, Travali Price, some guys I really want to look at. And right now, it seems like they're playing really well and getting some valuable reps. Sorry tackling here in the uh, it's fun to watch them get after each other a little bit and uh, protect some of the older guys and get them out and let the young guys have some fun and uh, get you know crack a little head a little bit so <laughs> it's good speaking of the older guys a lot of them here on the sideline because they're injured how have they taken advantage of a different type of leadership for Isaiah Moore, obviously starting with him, the leader of our defense. He's been, you know, just a tremendous asset to some of these guys while I injured, uh, helping them out, watching a lot of film with them. Peyton Wilson, uh, some of our D-linemen, Corey Durden. So excited about that. And, uh, you know, they're learning a lot from those guys. Well, we just missed a play that happened there, but I know you said uh, Isaiah Moore was calling your plays right now. Well, he wanted to uh, call. I said, that's fine. Just don't give up the shutout. If he does, he's getting fired. <laughs> I love it. Thanks, Coach. Yep, thank you. Guys. Good stuff. Uh, job on the line because <laughs> Josh Crabtree goes 44 yards to the house. Yeah, that was a nice strike. We were talking about it in the break. Then Finley getting an opportunity to make a play. That was really nice. Redshirt freshman out of Heritage, a rally native. Josh Crabtree was high school teammates with Ricky Parson, the Thomas brothers, the whole lot. Good protection. Crabtree just takes it in. Nice job of taking it to the house. Nick Trico was trying to keep up with him. Good route. Finley got it out on time, and he was able to catch it and turn that into six. Petra Ben is like, man, I finally got some protection. Finally got a chance to stay clean, and <laughs> Josh and I were able to hook up. Well, yeah, it's a defensive line group for NC State's first team defense that, again, Dave Doran is high on. And you heard one of the young guys that Tony Gibson mentioned, Travali Price, the redshirt freshman from here out of the state of North Carolina. And he said to us yesterday, among the guys that I, I wasn't certain about, he's really impressed and he has solidified a role, probably as a pass rushing guy on third downs in the upcoming season. End of the third in round. Swapping out jersey colors, bouncing between both sides. But in any event, everyone has stayed healthy from the NC State side of things. And uh, this is what they want to get out of it. Charles Arbuckle, Mike Monaco, Abby Labar, our entire crew back with you as we start the fourth buck. Yeah, it, what you want to see now, if you're the white team, let's score. Let's get out there and let's, let's make something happen. I know the red team has been dominant today. But it's a good opportunity for the, the young guys on the white team to really step up and make some plays. Zoe Wallace is operating at quarterback for the white team. 
Michael Allen is his running back. I told you out of the ESPN 300, a Greenville native who they are high on, out of the same high school as former NC State running back Andre Brown. Andre Brown had a nice career here, and they like Michael Allen a lot. Good job on that one of coming off with the pulling guard and tight end kind of behind him. Created some space for Allen. Good little pickup. Now they got to convert this third down. These are the things you want to see from your young players making plays and getting an opportunity against that. Some still some starters on the defense, but a lot of the backups on the defense for the red now as well. Davin Van has moved inside to nose. There's not a ton of depth right now with some of the injuries on the defensive side of the ball. So this is the recruiting class. It's an intentionally small one because of the way the rosters are structured nowadays with COVID considerations. So these are the guys that Dave Dorn and his staff brought in, including the transfer wide receiver, Daryl Jones from Maryland. But Allen jumps out, peak on the offensive line, and a quarterback in MJ Morris as well. And high school recruiting has taken a, a little bit of a beating post-COVID as well with the transfer portal and some of the other things that now take place. So it makes it a little bit more difficult in, the, in those instances. Allen, the headliner out of our ESPN rankings, doesn't commits because so many guys are back. And that was the theme that Abby told you about earlier. Run it back. And Tony Gibson, I, I like the way that he put it to us. You know, it says a lot about the culture that this program has that they wanted to come back for six years or fifth years. And he said there's something bigger out there that we haven't achieved yet, and namely that's an ACC championship. Yeah, you get the buzz that everybody around this program knows that that's, that's out there, that's out in front of them. Uh, they know they have a lot of work to do to get there, and I think that's what's so exciting about having all these guys back. Danny Sumo Cargabe gets popped on his carry out to the 25-yard line. He's got some bursts. That, that run right there, you start to the left and then bounce back. And he did get, he got wallet, but it popped right back up. The stick from Isaiah Crowell, one of those freshmen we showed you. He's one of five early enrollees already here and working with the pack. Ben Finley at the controls, and it goes through the wickets. And who's going to pounce on it? Scooped up at the one-yard line by Torin Wright, another one of the early enrollees. Uh, we talked about the White needing to score. I guess they're going to have to get it on defense. And they didn't have a lot of fumble recoveries last year, only one entire one. But this is huge. Look at that. You got to go hustle. You got to go get it. Nice job of keeping that ball alive. Almost ran over it, but was able to come up with it. Tony Gibson told us yesterday, you could put together a highlight reel of eight or nine different instances where it felt to him like they had a fumble recovery in their chest. And for as good as this defense was, second best scoring defense in the ACC, top 20 in every metric, that's something he wants to improve on. Yeah, torn right, man. He, he said, I got to go get this. And look, he's excited. <laughs> we, we were talking about it. He said they had zero. And we went through the stats. And there was one fumble recovery on the year. Torn right, you, you, you made Coach Gibson's day today, man. Michael Allen is met on first down and marked down inside the one yard line, trying to punch it in for the white team. This is a good chance for a young player to understand what you have to do in goal line situations. In high school, you might have been able to get away with not having that burst, but everybody is fired up to hit you. I thought Michael Allen did a nice job of just going in there and putting his head down, trying to get some yards. In order to score, you've got to be decisive as a running back down here in this dirty, dirty area, like that. You've got to put your head down, and you've got to go ahead. Nice job by Michael Allen. He's in for the touchdown and the first points for the white team. Yeah. He said, OK. I'm getting the ball. My offensive line is going to move people, right? And I got you, Devin Boykin. Are you going to stop me? No. I'm in for six. That's what the little bubble making it up if it wasn't said that way. 
Thought bubble extraordinaire Charles Arbuckle with us as Ian Williams is on for the point after. It's a good answer by the white team. They needed something out of this. 44 to 7 with nine to go on a ticking clock in the fourth. State is wrapping up their spring game, which means I am now joined by quarterback Devin Leary, who is done for the day. Uh, Devin, let's talk about what you did today. You talked about being more comfortable and being more in command of your offense. How did you feel? Yeah, I felt great today. Felt really comfortable being able to command those guys out there and really just running our system, being able to get us into the right looks, the right, the right time, and everything. Overall, we had really great chemistry, and it was a great day. You talked uh, about how you worked with some of your receivers in the winter. Can you tell us more about that and how you felt that translated to the field today? Yeah, so this offseason, you know, we took it upon ourselves as quarterbacks and wide receiver room to really get deep into the playbook and, you know, be able to take that next step. Um, back in the summer, uh, I'm sorry, back in the winter, we were meeting two times a week, throwing every Saturday, and, you know, just really being able to translate onto the field today. You talk about taking that on to yourselves. When you look at this group, the maturity and the culture that you guys have what are you capable of this season I mean the sky is the limit for us I mean we, we can go as far as we want to go I mean it's just up to us and that's what we like to say each and every week NC State versus NC State what's been your favorite part about today uh, today seeing the younger guys you know seeing guys like Demi Suno Anthony Smith making plays and you know guys on the sideline getting hyped up too thanks Devin thank you guys great stuff and uh a great quarterback, quite frankly. And, you know, if you were to try to play a little devil's advocate here, Buck, just what would you want to see? Like, what are your concern points for this team going forward or stuff you need to know for sure about them uh, headed into next year? Running back position, who kind of comes out of that as a guy, you know, one or two, you're going to have two guys that probably hold that down. I think offensive line is still one of those areas where I want to see more from. Secondary looks like it's coming back. And then the health of the linebackers that are coming back in. I know Isaiah Moore, we're excited about that. Peyton as well, Peyton Wilson. But, you know, how is that going to translate to their health coming in? Those are the things that I just, at a high level, think about for this ball club. Again, to reiterate, Dave Doran said to us, there's no one injured right now that he's worried about for the fall. And Peyton said earlier to Abby, he's better than 90%. Isaiah Moore is on the road to recovery as well. And as Tony Gibson put it to us, these guys have so many reps already that they don't need the spring work. Julian Gray hauls it in from Ben Finley and a stiff arm to finish a 45-yard touchdown. That was a name that also came up quite a bit, Julian Gray, a guy that kind of expected who was going to make some plays. Out of the slot, this nice route. Ben Finley puts it over to almost that other hash, lets him go get it, and then he just does the rest. With the nice stiff arm to get in at the very end. Devin Betty. Julian Gray, who had all of three catches last year. Redshirt freshman from Charlotte, who was the first commit in his class. This one is no good from Colin Smith. So again, nine and three last year, six and two in the ACC, and they finished 20th in the last AP poll. They didn't get a chance to play in that Holiday Bowl game. But so many faces are back. They're going to start on the road, and after those four non-conference games, they will head to Clemson, and that's a place or as we talked about at halftime, that NC State hasn't won since 2002. Yeah, it, it, you got it right in front of you, right? And you started early in the season, so I'm interested to see it. I, I think we, 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 we all know what's there. They know. Now it's an opportunity for them to get what's out in front of them. And on that last play, I want to give credit to Jackson Vick, who was trying to come over the top. Now, Devin Betty. Betty said, hey, look, man, I'm already out of here. <laughs> I, I played early. And one of those linebackers, you talk about young guys last year taking advantage of opportunities and had a pretty good first half, by the way. So Wallace goes to the air. A wobbler was intended for Jackson De Silva. Not a very good pass by So Wallace. De Silva was like, hey, get, get it to me. <laughs> 
think you also see too with the number of guys that have those concussion uh, helmets, you know, that extra protection. You know, doing a lot of things to make sure you protect your guys in the spring. You're going to fly around the football, but you also have, you know, the added protection that kind of help you in these situations when you're going live. On a reverse, De Silva picks up a couple of yards put to the turf by Jackson Vick and company. So we couldn't quite get the hand off of it. He bobbled it a little bit, and then once he did, he was able to take off with it. Right team is trying to get some things going again on offense. Look, the Silva couldn't quite get it when he does. He's got guys chasing him. Can't get away from him. In particular, Price tracking him down. Now Duke Carroll in at quarterback. At the tail end of this one, he throws incomplete, intended for Dylan Mosley. We thought we would get a chance to see both of the quarterbacks. They're getting a chance to get some of that action. Very late in the game. But I think everybody knows who the star of the show is, Devin Leary. 355 passing yards. Three touchdowns through the air for the 50-year senior quarterback. Was the team MVP last year and is one of the best QB1s in the entire country. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to watching his progression and how they come out of this spring and then in the fall camp. If they can keep these guys healthy, man, this is a good opportunity for NC State. We saw a lot of the, 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 what they've done built a nice culture guys coming back we got to talk to quite a few of them today but I think the big thing is can you go on and win the ACC championship and I think that's what they have to kind of set themselves up for you said it right off the top it is a boulder on the shoulder yeah. the way they were frustrated and angry quite frankly with how last season ended with the Holiday Bowl cancellation. But so many pieces back at NC State spring game, a red win over White. For Charles, Abby, and our entire crew, Mike Bonico saying so long from Carter-Finley Stadium.